Thank you, Alessandra, for your introduction. I'm really honored to be in here today showing uh, the work that we have developed over the last year on quantifying insulin response towards a multi-organ chip approach and the challenges of transferring molecular biology methods into three-dimensionality and into the chip. So we all know why insulin, uh, studying insulin response is important. So I want to recap a bit what happens when insulin interacts with um, uh, different cells in our body. So starting with hepatocytes, um, insulin regulation is uh, relevant in a fat state where there is high insulin, high glucose, high fatty acids availability to the cell. Insulin interacts with the insulin receptor, activates the AKT pathway, which gets phosphorylated, which signals downstream to um, increase glycogen synthesis and, and glucose uptake, <coughs> together with inhibiting hepatic glucose production, um, uh, inhibiting beta oxidation and fatty acid uptake, and uh, ultimately leading to triglyceride secretion through the LDL that would then be in a later stage uptaken by the adipocyte. In the adipocyte, the same pathway is activated, and the downstream signaling uh, shows us that there's a translocation from the FOXO1 transcription factor from the nucleus to the cytoplasm. Um, the um, intracellular vesicles containing glucose transporters will merge with, um, uh, extra with the cellular membrane to increase the capacity to uptake glucose by the adipocyte, which in the end will uh, lead to lipogenesis, uptake of fatty acids, and uh, lactate secretion, which will uh, have a negative feedback on lipolysis, so there will be lipolysis inhibition as a result of insulin signaling. To study this on chip, we work with a chip design uh, developed by Yuda Hoga, uh, the water depots tissue, which allows to um, use differences in um, fluidic resistance for a, a soft injection of adipocytes without applying extra pressure and uh, that allows for the trapping of these fragile and buoyant cells into the tissue compartment. So the cells are separated from the vasculature-like um, perfusion by a semi-permeable membrane, and because the tissue is on the bottom, it also allows for high-resolution microscopy. It's possible then to integrate all cellular components in an autologous manner, enabling um, enable patient-specific models, and if you're interested, you can have a look in Yulia's publication from last year. This is possible also because we receive a skin biopsy from subcutaneous fat, where we isolate from the same biopsy human primary adipocytes and not differentiated uh, stem cells. So they are really only um, with one uh, lipid uh, vacuole, as well as endothelial cells, and this allows to better mimic the in vivo white adipose tissue environment. So first we wanted to see, still in a PDMS chip, how does uh, the, inter the presence of endothelial cells affect uh, the adipocyte uh, secretome and the uh, metabolism of the adipocyte. By adding endothelial cells, we could observe that almost all um, cytokines uh, were produced at a much higher concentration and with adipocytes alone. When we look at the baseline lipolysis level, we see a high interdonor difference and we see that the presence of endothelial cells really contributes to a, a, a higher basal lipolytic level and this was performed for two donors uh, with three to six chips per condition. When we look at the um, metabolic rate, the ratio between uh, glucose uh, consumption and lactate production, we see that the donor that has a higher metabolic rate, so consuming more glucose, is also the one that has a, mo a more um, basal, uh, a, a lower basal level of lipolysis meaning that uh, donor-specific uh, hints are very important to draw final conclusions on the metabolic state of um, each cell. Then going to the liver, we wanted to uh, know how long is the liver stable in terms of lipid and glucose metabolism, and for that we adapted the chip design from Professor Alexandra Mozik into our PDMS platform, and we observed up to one month a very stable glycogen content, fatty acid um, content, as well as morphology of the hepatocyte. Here we use the FRG cell line. So then we wanted to, to know more about function. At day 14, we starve the cells for three days, and starving means reducing glucose and insulin concentration. 
and we observed that starvation led to overexpression of uh, CD36, which is a facilitator of fatty acid uptake. So then we wanted to know about the kinetics, and we used um, a body P analog, which is fluorescent with a 12 carbon, so medium length um, fatty acid, and observed as expected that the cells that were fasted for three days had a much higher uh, fatty acid uptake and fatty acid release rate. So then we thought, okay, let's work on connecting uh, two organs. But here we decided to use a PDMS-free flexible connection of two organs, and we use PMMA as a material. Because in the end, we want to screen the effect of hormones, we want to screen the effect of drugs, and we cannot risk that we don't have control over its concentration. So this modular platform was designed to allow the connection of both organs when each of them is ready. And there we have an additional connecting channel and we ap apply pressure to create a tight connection. We designed a 3D printed cassette where the two chips are integrated um, and apply pressures us using springs and screws. With this system, we were able to implement both linear and recirculation perfusion that was stable within the range of 20 microliters per hour up to 500 microliters per hour. And both tissues showed to be viable over five days, both the adipose tissue and the liver chip. Here, we also took special attention on the scaling of both organs, and after a lot of thinking exercise and calculations, we end up by deciding on the volumetric scaling. And that's why we change a bit the, the the design of the liver chip and also change the dimensions of the watch chip by making them bigger and less in number. In this uh, modular uh, approach where the watt was always connected upstream to the liver, so the liver was exposed to the watt secretome, we first looked that there would be no pressure differences in the system that would affect the adipocytes. The adipocytes maintained is uh, morphology and unilocularity and were covered by a very homogeneous endothelial layer. Um, here I show you a higher resolution uh, image of the endothelial, on endothelial cells on top of the adipocytes, on top of uh, the, um, in the liver chip, on top of the FRG cells, on the connecting um, media channel of both the liver chip of and of the watch chip. So the whole contact of media to each tissue is through an endothelial lining. Then we look into uh, liver-specific markers. We observe the presence of e catherin We observe a specific presence of MRP2 on a cell-to-cell -cell contact that you see there in magenta. We evaluate fatty acid accumulation by just quantifying the total fluorescence of the whole chip when it was connected to the watch chip compared to a liver chip that was not connected, where we had um, almost a two-fold difference in total fluorescence intensity. When we look into more detail, with the high resolution imaging, we really see a lot of small little droplets in all of the cells in the liver chip. We also quantify triglyceride secretion. And indeed, already after one day of connection, we see that the liver chip that was connected to the watt is secreting more triglycerides than the non-connected chip. And this difference is maintained after five days, although the exact level of triglycerides decre decreases slightly. So now we have a full PDMS chip to chip, and I wanted to concentrate my, my efforts on measure on quantifying insulin response on the PDMS-free watch chip. So the cells were isolated and seated on the chip one day later, uh, culturi cultured on basal media. After this, uh, the cells were equilibrated for another 30 minutes in basal media. Some effluents were co co collected and they were cultured for another 30 minutes in simulation media, ranging glucose from uh, 60 nanomolar to 6,000 um, um, nanomolar, and increasing the glucose to from 7 to 11 uh, millimolar. After this time, we fixed the cells for immunofluorescence analysis and, and quantified the content in the effluence of glycerol and lactate. For uh, imaging the fatty acid uptake in the adipocytes in response to insulin, we uh, incubated the cells also for 30 minutes in the simulation uh, conditions, and then for another 30 minutes without the fatty acid analog and um, with a very low um, insulin and very low glucose concentration here of 3.5 millimolar. The data from the fatty acid transport, here we used a long chain fatty acid with uh, 16 carbons, which uh, assures us that the transport is more specific. 
we clearly see uh, those response, uh, so insulin concentration dependent uptake rate of uh, fatty acid into the adipocytes. And this was made by live imaging analysis. When we remove the fatty acid analog and reduce insulin and glucose concentration, we see that the chips that were exposed to high insulin levels that had a very high uptake of fatty acids are also the ones that are slower on releasing the fatty acid. So next we wanted to see how do the cells respond in terms of a FOXO1 location. So recapping what I mentioned in the beginning, in the fat state there's high insulin and FOXO1 will be in the cytoplasm and in the fat fasted state will be in the nucleus. Here I use multifoton microscopy because 3D imaging of the adipocytes is particularly challenging where most of your tissue is lipids, so there's a lot of, of light diffraction and multifoton microscopy really plays a hand here. So the data that you see here for two donors, each dot is one cell. And with this single cell resolution, we see that for different donors, we can see where is the threshold. So fr from which insulin concentration can we see that there's less FOXO1 content in the nuclei. Then we wanted to quantify GLUT4 membrane translocation. And this is a much more challenging endpoint. Um, because it's very difficult uh, to isolate the cells. Um, so the data that you see here, it's a whole tissue data. And we indeed see a trend on increased GLUT4 presence in the cell membrane. The issue is, and this data is not significant and the values are quite similar, there is a lot of heterogeneity in the white adipose tissue. So not all of the all cells will be insulin resistant and there will be subpopulation. So single cell data will be essential, but we are not there yet in terms of image analysis and probably we will also have to improve our uh, staining strategy to be really sure that we can isolate the cells from each other. Nevertheless, effluent analysis confirmed observations of FOXO1 and GLUT4 imaging data where we see uh, insulin-induced lact lactate secretion here for three different donors uh, compared with different colors, um, as well as a decrease in glycerol um, concentration. So insulin is inhibiting lipolysis. Um, however, I want to highlight this data was done from the same chips and sun same donors. But it's really important to consider that each endpoint has a different timing on insulin response, and it's very challenging to get the correct window of response to establish an assay that we can have trust. So next uh, work will be really on focusing on imaging uh, endpoints on a very shorter time, like 10 minutes instead of 30, because this molecular re regulation is quite quick, while uh, effects on the effluent will take longer, and this is very important to to get time resolution on different endpoints. So as a conclusion, we su successfully established on-chip readout assays to measure lipid and glucose metabolism with um, a possibility of a transfer of PDMS chips into a PDMS-free modular multi-organ connection of uh, tailored organ-on-a-chip models, demonstrating a sustained endotelization and the effect of the white adipose tissue secretome on the liver chip lipid metabolism. We were also able, able to characterize insulin response in the PDMS-free watch chip. All of these towards in vitro pharmacology and disease modeling for metabolic diseases. I really want to thank all of the team in the microorgano lab, uh, our collaboration collaborators, uh, Professor Alexander Mozik and Professor Frank Sacker here in Berlin, as well as the funding that made this project possible. I would be really happy to uh, discuss this with you. So thank you, Madalena, for your talk. Uh, are there any questions? Yes. Hi, nice talk. Uh, just a quick question on the scaling. Um, I, I wonder what's your take on how you scale the endothelial cells respect to the adipocytes. I know you mentioned about the volumetric scaling. Oh, oh okay. Uh, well, <laughs> I, I wonder what's your philosophical take on the scaling of the endothelial cells with respect to the adipocytes. I know you volumetrically scaled the adipocytes with respect to liver. How did you guys proceed with that and what effects do you see in terms of paracrine signaling? Thank you for your question, Ishan. So we scaled the volumes of the white adipose tissue compartment and the liver compartment, considering one layer of 
uh, of hepatocytes, but we did not scale the endothelial cells. So we did model the endothelial cells, present a very important barrier function that will have a very important metabolic buffer role between the media and, and the response. So they will also allow to accumulate nutrients and, and cytokines within the microtissue. We did not scale the number of endothelial cells within the platform, so we gave priority to the design and to the connection to make it possible because we are also not vascularizing the tissue, so that would be a very um, not correct assumption. Is there any more questions? Yeah. Thank you for your talk. Um, I was wondering why you are working with very supra-physiological phy insulin concentration. Is there reasons about the fact they don't respond to physiological insulin concentrations? So the, the data that I showed on the FRG that are absolutely up um, supra-physiological, that's how FRG cells are cultured. Um, but on the more recent work and all the data that I showed on insulin, the basal concentration of insulin is 60 picomolar and that's not supra-physiological. The stimulation with 60 nanomolar is also within a physiological range, but the future work would be to fine-tune better and the three conditions should be 10, 60, 150, so we could have a range at the lower. Um, the reason why I decided to go up to 60,000 um, nanomolar, 6,000 nanomolar was I wanted to know if I can establish the readout and have confidence on the readout to then fine tune later. So this is this work is about readout development, not about the so that would be definitely the next step. Thank you. So uh, there's time for maybe one more quick question. Okay, no. So thank you, Madalena, for your talk. It was very interesting.